Okay, open your Bibles, the book of Mark. Today we're continuing on in chapter 9 in the gospel. We're going to cover a lot of ground today, verses 30 to 50, and we're going to learn about the key to greatness, and that's really a good question to start with. What do you believe is the key to greatness? Our culture probably has a lot of different answers for this. Certainly some people would say money or fame or accomplishments in your life, but Jesus has a different answer, and that's what we're going to see in the text today. So let's get to it. Verse 30, leaving that region, Jesus and his disciples traveled through Galilee. Jesus didn't want anyone to know that he was there, for he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. So he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later, he will rise from the dead. It says that they didn't understand what he was saying, however, and they were afraid to ask him what he meant. Now, they continued to walk, and apparently the disciples had a side conversation, and they didn't think that Jesus heard what they were saying, because it says in verse 33 that after they arrived at Capernaum and settled into a house, Jesus asked his disciples, what were you discussing out on the road? But they didn't answer because they'd been arguing about which of them was the greatest. Now, isn't that ironic? Jesus had just told them that he would have to suffer, that he would have to die and they're busy talking about which one of them had the highest rank in his eyes. So he turned it into a teaching moment, as he usually does. He sits down, he calls the 12 disciples over to him, and then he said this, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Now, let's review. Two weeks ago, Jesus had taken three of his disciples up on the mountain. So maybe this was part of the conversation as they thought they were the favorites. And maybe the other nine said, no, you're not the favorites. It's just you're the ones that Jesus has to keep the closest eye on. That's why he took you. I mean, we don't really know why Jesus took those three exactly. And then last week, we saw that the other nine were unable to cast out a demon. And so some of the context of what we've been looking at in the last two weeks plays into maybe why they were arguing about greatness. But Jesus wants to make sure that they understand what he's saying here about the first and the last. And so he puts a little child among them. And he took the child in his arms, and then he said this to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also my Father who sent me. Now, we've got to be careful not to read this text through modern eyes, because, you know, in our culture, we love children, and they're really valuable. But in Greek and Jewish society, children were really unimportant. So Jesus isn't saying here that we have to come to God like a child. He does teach that in other places. But what he's saying is that if you are a follower of Jesus, you should receive children. So the key to greatness in God's kingdom is to not look down on little children, to not despise the insignificant ones in your culture. Now look at how John responds here in verse 38. He said, teacher, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he wasn't in our group. All right, hold on a second. There's so much to unpack in this verse right here. First of all, it's almost like John wasn't paying attention to what Jesus just said. He said, don't disregard the people who are on the outside. And here John is disregarding them. I mean, look at the verse. It says that this guy was using Jesus's name, so he wasn't like an unbeliever. And besides, just earlier in the chapter, the other nine disciples weren't able to cast out a demon, so maybe they're a little bit jealous here. But Jesus is going to use this to teach them another humbling lesson, that the kingdom of God is larger than their experience of it. So Jesus says to John, don't stop him. No one who performs a miracle in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. And if anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. You know, it's so easy to get the idea, especially the longer that we're Christians, that sort of our perspective is right, our group is right, and that other group, maybe they have a distinctive that we don't agree with. Well, that other group is less than, that other group is not as important as our group. But remember what Jesus is trying to teach here in this whole passage, that the key to greatness is humility. The disciples probably thought that the key to greatness was performing miracles, which they couldn't even do sometimes. But Jesus moves the focus from performing a miracle to giving someone a cup of water. So greatness isn't equated to heroic signs and wonders. 
Greatness is equated to humble service. And so Jesus says in verse 42, but if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone hung around your neck. Now, if you look at the context of this passage, it seems like probably that child from earlier in the passage is still sitting on Jesus's lap. And so maybe Jesus is talking about children, but it could be actually that he's talking about that exorcist from verse 38. In other words, it could be that Jesus is saying to his disciples, don't discount the faith of that independent, unknown exorcist just because he isn't in your inner circle. So Jesus is calling his followers to humility. And then at the end of the passage, he says this, verses 49 and 50, for everyone will be tested with fire. Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. You know, there are many different ingredients that make for true, authentic followers of Jesus. But humility might just be the greatest because humility is the seasoning that makes everything we do and stand for in the Christian faith more palatable for those around us. So according to Jesus, the key to greatness is humility.